Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is an end-to-end -end video in eight parts of my painting, Mount Gretna Home. Here in episode four, I am developing the foreground of the painting, which is primarily made up of flowers and baskets. I paint many, many, many flowers and many, many leaves. And then, when that's a little bit dry, I remove the masking in this episode. Please give it a thumbs up if you like it, and subscribe to see more. Now let's get to the painting. Back to the painting. Here we have some partially developed front gardens and I'm going to continue working on the foreground and developing all of the hanging baskets and plants that are in the front of the property. I'm coming in with my green-orange mix to make some of the plants a different shade of green which is going to spark interest and keep the eye moving around the painting without getting bored. I had just sprayed this area so it's covered with tiny little droplets of water and that allows the greens to spread around in quite a natural and interesting way. Starting with the light side, then I go into some medium tones and I'm trying to keep the plants a little bit separated from each other to show that each one is a separate hanging pot. Here I'm using the blue-greens. Coming back over to the area on the right, which was mostly dry at that point, and adding a little more detail as I go. Some strong yellows to show the sunlight. Some beautiful flower colors. So I'm using a variety of flower colors. I'm trying to show some of the purplish pink flowers, some of the deep colors of scarlet, orangey reds, and bright reds. I'm mixing up a good dark color using a variety of colors of pink. I am not using black in this painting at all. Now this is the shaded side of the house. So each of these pots of plants was capturing sunlight on one side, but quite dark on the other side, which made it stand out and give a nice structure to the whole garden. Again, you see my approach where I'm making lots and lots of little dots and dashes. It's keeping the paint somewhat isolated so it doesn't all run together and make just a big blurry mess. And you can see the structures begin to form. So this home is located in Mount Gretna, Pennsylvania. It was truly a unique area to visit. 
we were there for a large art show in which I participated called the Mount Gretna Art Show. The show had very high quality paintings. People had to be juried before they were allowed into the show and drew a huge crowd. With a little downtime, we took a walk around the back streets behind Mount Gretna Art Show and saw these beautiful homes all built on a hill. This is the vacation and resort area. And I would recommend it for a visit. Right down the street from Mount Gretna is the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. We didn't get to stop and see that, but I would like to sometime. Putting these bright flowers in was fun. I love the pretty colored paints that are so bright and lovely. Making all the greens, that's a little bit more tedious, but it's necessary to create the whole foil for the darks, lights, brights, and leafy colors. Here comes the second layer of darkness. The first layer had dried and gotten a little lighter than I wanted. Adding the darks adds structure and accent as well. These are being painted in fairly dry. I did not do any misting or plant or any spray with the spray bottle. I say plant because I was using a plant sprayer before. The thing began to break and not work correctly. So now I'm using a bottle from a household function that I washed out very carefully. It makes a nice fine spray. Here I'm moving into the very last section of pot potted plants on the left. And these are in much deeper shadow, so they're going to get more darks. And you see where the negative painting was done on the lower left around the plant with fern type foliage. I then colored in with a light green color and against the negative painting you could see the plant form. There's one more plant like that on the lowest left and you'll see that forming as well. Negative painting involves painting around an object with dark colors to make it stand out. I believe most of these plants were begonias and geraniums. Most of the flowering plants, anyway. 
but I think those were two ferns in the lower left. Far left was a bush. I'm trying to keep the bush light on the right side and darker as it goes toward the left and further down into the shadows of the house. Back to the ivy on the house. And a couple more hanging plants that were coming down in the very front of the porch there. Overall, what you've seen me do this far is set up the home and the structure of the home and then move into all the plants which were what made this house so special. I was working background to middle ground to foreground. And once I have the flowers marked out in the front of the house, I'm going to be going back to the house and doing more development on the architecture and the structure of it. But all those little dots of painting the plants and flowers and leaves in the front took a really long time. So you're seeing me paint at twice my speed, but in actuality there were an awful lot of hours put into creating this painting. <laughs> And now the painting is dry again, and I'm coming back and adding some additional steps. This second stairway coming down in the right was just getting hit by the sun on the very bottom. I realized I had not even drawn in the steps, so I just sort of put them in quickly, put in some structure. I didn't worry over much about that. Now the masking comes off. As valuable a tool as masking is, it can be difficult to get off. I started out taking the masking off by using a pink eraser. 
Again, remember this painting was totally dry before I began to remove the masking. The eraser was going slow and wasn't quite doing the job thoroughly. So I'm filling in with my fingers and rubbing the masking off. I've seen people using different techniques to get this stuff off. And I try a variety of techniques. This painting is going to look very different with all the masking off. And that's where the work will begin all over again. But I do value the whites that are left by this process. And working with them in watercolor makes the painting, to me, more lively and sparkly. If you use too much masking and you have too little paint, obviously you can go back and adjust. And I have to do a lot of adjusting after I get this masking off. Still working away. And here comes the flag. This will be the first American flag I've ever painted. And it's hanging right there in front of the porch. You can see all the room I've left myself to paint bright flowers. These pure whites will take it nicely. Coming in with a small eraser and trying something else again because much of the masking stuck and did not want to come off easily. Using your fingers you can easily feel the masking under your your hand because it's rough and it sticks up. And you need to get it all off as much work as it might be. Hoping you enjoyed this video and that you learned something too as well as me learning something. I appreciate your likes and please do subscribe. If you click on the bell and select all, you'll get a ring whenever I post a new video. Your comments are always welcome and I will see you soon with a new end-to-end -end painting. So don't forget to subscribe.